feel free to ask exactly what you want, Roberto, answer it. I'm sure there's not many managers who do this, so let's, let's just enjoy a moment while we can. So if you just introduce yourselves and then maybe start with you, Ben. Hi, I'm Barry. Barry. Uh, from Battle Football. Again, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, um, my name's Paul. I joined Barry's site and he's inviting me along. Welcome, Paul. Thank you. Hi, Bernard Ramsdale from this novel. So. Jeff Judge, no one's all. Sorry? Jeff Judge. Jeff, I'm sorry. Uh, I mean, one question that I'd, I'd like to ask is uh, at the end of last season when we met, and I, it's a question I asked, and I, I said, about Charles and Zogby leaving, and I said, if he left, would we be looking to promote from the youth? Or, and you said at the time, no, 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 we definitely wouldn't do that. What we'd be doing is looking to bring someone in with the, with the experience to, to, you know, to take his place. And I just wonder, do you feel that we've actually done that? Have we brought in someone to replace Charles? Um, yes, I, I think it's, in, um, if I'm honest with you, I think it's impossible to replace someone like Charles and Zogby, like for like, because if you look in the market, in world football, you'll, you'll get two or three players that they were very similar. There is a player like uh, that I'm sure you'll remember, the, the, he plays for for Switzerland, Shakiri, and he's all left footed and he was with the under twenty ones. One we inquired about his price. He went up to ten million euros. So I think that's that's where we are. You cannot replace like for like. What I feel is that probably Victor Moses is ready to, to take that role in a completely different type of player. So what what you do is you change a little bit the way to play. But I just feel that we brought players like Joe Maloney, Albert Cruzat, that they're going to give us a lot over the course of the season. Obviously, we have to be patient enough to allow them to adapt to the to the pace of the Premier League. But I think we, in a way, we we got a very strong squad. And I know when you get negative results, it's difficult to see that. But the squad now is a stronger in numbers than it was last season. And I would say that we replace. Charles and Tom Cleverly, which they were the two big roles that we missing from last campaign, in a different way. And I feel that in the attacking, in attacking play, we haven't been uh, missing the chances that we were creating last season. What we haven't done so far, and that's why we got the results, is we haven't taken them chances. But in football, as you know, the hardest thing is to create the chances, and we've done that. So to answer your question, I don't think we're in a position where we can replace players like for like when you sell a player for the best part of 10 million pounds mm -hmm. but what we've done is replaced uh, I feel the squad is stronger now than it was last season and right. obviously now it's a matter of allowing the squad to show that because you are only strong if you can show the results yeah. and that's that's the next six months right. is the challenge to show that right. um, How much of team selection comes down to the last game and how much comes down to what you see in training day in day out because obviously we get to see sort of two hours of a guy's work week at yes. a time and make a judgement on that and you obviously see an awful lot more. I think, I think there are many, just to be very open and honest, I think the, the, the team selection goes down to uh, moments of form of our players. That moment of form needs to be judged by what they do in games uh, primarily and then the training uh, work that they do. And one big factor as well is the opposition, uh, as you remember. Well, as you know, in the Premier League, you cannot play the same way that you play at home, that you play away from home. When you play against Man City, after a fantastic moment of form, or after you play Man United, when they haven't got Wayne Rooney, or when they've got Wayne Rooney, I think every team is, is very, very different. But I would say that moment of form of the players goes down to their work and training and the work that they be doing in games. But there are many, many factors that it goes down to, to, the, to the opposition, and that, that plays a big, a big role. Right. Hi, going, going to the last meeting we had, it was after the, after the Stoke game, uh, you, you was enthusing about the ability, in fact you called him a beast, Roman Gullivard. Yes. And um, Callum, Mac, Callum Mack. Um, you were enthusing that they were almost ready for first team match and then, then we find Roman is loaned to Inverness and you've also loaned um, Callum, to, Callum Black. to Blackpool. Yes. Um, I think I know the answer. Your reason is for them to get more. Is it just to get more experience? Were, were they not? How far away are they? If, if we would be a team that, uh, and we were talking about this today, uh, if we could afford to have games where the result is not important, I think you could give minutes and, and playing time to youngsters to allow them to develop, to get a taste of what's, what it means to, 
to to perform in the first team environment, how you can win games. I don't think we are Manchester United that we can do that. I think every game that we play, we need eight or nine players performing at the highest level to be able to get a result. And that's a big problem for the youngsters because they can only get cup games right. and they need first team football. That's why... Is it, uh, uh, sorry, it's two, it's two questions. It's just reminding me of another. Yeah. Um, is, it, is it not feasible to put at least one of the young lads or two on the bench? Well, <coughs> just to get them, to get them kind of wanting to be out there and give... give I think we created that as a structure, uh, believe me, we, we're working really hard on getting um, a path for the youngster to get into the first team, and that's a big priority, a week and athletic, but we need to be fair with the players, it's not, you need to be prepared to be on the football pitch and be able to perform, it would be very unfair for us just to put a youngster and then expect to perform, and yeah. then we would be the first ones to say, well, get him out because he's not performing. I think it's, it's, it's the first time in the last two years that we sold a player from the from the development squad that we call it without playing in the first team which is, it means that there is a value in that group from the outside second that we send the quality of uh, Roman Golobart into the SPL uh, I don't think we've been able to send young players into the SPL we've got a player that he goes to the championship and is making a real mark and is performing really well and I think those experiences are vital for these players to develop and play in the first team Roman Golobart played a few games in pre-season clearly needed some other experiences and now is is developing so is finally you're, you're, you're convinced you benefit from it massively massively remember that now Roman is out of the squad yeah. for Inverness I think that's part of his development is how he reacts to that and there are certain aspects that you need to test and you need to experience in a first team environment and that's what Roman has done. He, the first game he had a couple of mistakes, he suffered for it, uh, by it, and then he had two great performances, and then he had another mistake, he's out of the team now. It's how he's going to sharpen up that we're going to see his, yeah. his full potential. Callum McManaman is someone that is he's got a great character, nothing faces him. And I've seen him play now for Blackpool against Leeds, and I've seen him play uh, the last half an hour against Nottingham Forest, I've seen him a little 20 minutes against Burnley, I've seen every single minute that he's played, and he's a different player. And he went away with England, I think from the mental side he developed a lot, but he went backwards in certain aspects of his game, and now going out on uh, Blackpool, we're going to get back a player that will be ready for the first team. So, no so he will be ready? Yes, he will, he will be this season. And that's, that's what we need to do, be fair with the youngsters. It's no good to, to develop youngsters that they're not ready. I think it's such a demanding... Play for Wigan Athletic is very demanding because you have to be ready when you're on the pitch. There is no margin of error, there's no time to, to, to adapt to it. And for the youngsters, that's very, very, very tough. And we need to help them. And playing first in football allows you to do that. And when Roman will finish his period at, at Inverness, we'll see where he is and the same for Carl McMahon. And I think it would be unfair to put too much pressure, but it would be unfair not to give them the opportunities to keep developing as, as high as they can. Now we've got another three players in the development squad that I feel they've got potential to play for Wigan Athletic. Now, they're not ready yet, and they're not there, but all over the course of two years, to have five players that they could play with the first team, it shows you all the hard work that in, in, in behind the scenes is taking it's taken a good, a good shape. All right, thank you. Uh, do you believe your training methods are good enough? Uh, we often uh, look on the website and various people are suggesting you should get a defensive coaching. Uh, what do you think about that? 